Good afternoon. I'm Mark Allen with Gaper IO, and I'm here today with Richard Lynn, the CEO of Thrive Inside. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon. Love the background, sir. Thank you. And, and <laughs> I wish that was my backyard. Actually, my I'm not. I have a pretty nice area, though. I'm I'm about three minutes from the San Francisco Bay, which really isn't too bad. Nice, nice. Yeah. You got the lake behind you and everything. Very yeah. serene. So. Mm -hmm. So can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Uh, yeah, sure. So obviously, Richard, um, the CEO of a company called Thrive Inside. Uh, prior to starting Thrive, I was a product manager uh, working at large enterprise software companies like SAP, uh, all the way down to startups like Delive. Mm -hmm. And so my experience has been mainly in building products uh, for you know software applications on the web, on mobile, and uh, started Thrive about three years ago. And I can talk a little bit about that uh, as a follow-on. All right. So, yeah, we'll talk, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So what yeah. your experience with remote employment, both as a remote employee and a remote employer? And, and this would be pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, let me think back as an employee. Um, most of the companies I worked at uh, didn't really have too much of a remote policy. Um, I... I can't say that there was anything kind of uh, set in stone to be like, hey, Fridays, you know, work from home. It was always kind of like requested. Oh, I have like a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. um, let me work then. Uh, the tools back then, I'm saying, I sound, I sound old saying this, even though I look, <laughs> I look young, but the tools back then weren't as robust as they are now. You know, we have Zoom, we have Slack, we have all these collaboration tools. Uh, so it definitely helps a lot with remote work. Um, actually, my kind of an interesting experience I've had, this is outside of work, of how I use remote tools mm -hmm. for my advantage was, uh, I was actually working as a senior in college. This was mm -hmm. about seven years ago. I was working full-time in the Bay Area and I was going to school at UC Davis. Mm -hmm. And I used to commute to school. So it was a two hour drive. And uh, I decided to work more than I went to class. So the way I kind of did remote work for school was I got every single email of the students in my class and I emailed them uh, a Google Doc to have everybody contribute on their notes. And so I literally just studied the notes when I wasn't in class and I would just go do my midterm with all that information in there and I aced my, my uh, classes without actually being there. Um, so not necessarily remote work, but uh, yeah. little, an interesting little story with like remote academic. Different kind classes. of remote work. And, and the teachers were okay yeah. with that or did they even know you were doing it? No, uh, it was my little secret mm. between all the classmates. <laughs> yeah, cool. Interesting. I once had my brother pay me to sit in in a classroom that he knew and just take notes for him. That he knew the he knew the curriculum already. It was actually a program. Got it. And he actually, you guys, he, he'd take notes. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd give them to him. And then that's how I learned programming. And then I went into the, the IT world. Wow, that's crazy. Do you guys look alike? Some people think so. I, I don't, but some people. Oh, okay, okay. I was like... <laughs> Then the professor started looking at you like, hey, you look like a different person. <laughs> well, it was, it was a big school, so. Oh, got it, okay. Right, you know, there were like at least 50 kids in the class, so you didn't really know. Entrepreneurs at heart, we're just trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Beat the system. Yeah, yeah. So, so what do you think is the future of remote employment, and, and what do you think could be done differently to make it more effective? You know, I think with the whole COVID issue, I think it's just going to become more normal. I don't think it's going to be, you know, companies are going to go fully remote. Um, I think it's going to be a mix. There's just something about being in person that uh, it's a lot more difficult to replicate if you're not there to, you know, hear, smell, mm -hmm. and, you know, touch different things. Um, you know, one of the things that I've seen is like, you know, whiteboarding is such a huge part of, you know, what I do as a CEO now, but also before I had a product manager, just being able to communicate effectively. Um, but I do see that becoming a, a huge hybrid across the board for multiple companies. Like for us at Thrive Inside, uh, we've traditionally, even before COVID, have been a hybrid model. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're always work from home because of the commute. Mm -hmm. uh, our office is in Redwood City, but um, people are coming from San Jose or coming from San Francisco. It's an hour drive, you know, back and forth. And so we've always had that kind of in our DNA <clears throat> and we're going to, I believe we're going to start seeing bigger companies kind of fall suit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I agree. I think the, I think the hybrid is going to become the model of the future. I hope so. Yeah. Since we both live in the Bay area, it will have a huge impact on 
traffic and cost of life. That, that commute is brutal. Right. <laughs> and you didn't even mention anybody in the East Bay. I mean, going across those bridges in the morning is brutal. That's in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that bridge is a whole nother beast. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I live about a mile from the San Mateo Bridge, and it starts backing up at two o'clock in the afternoon on a typical day. Yeah, I don't like being reminded of it. Yeah. <laughs> it brings back flashbacks. Yeah, you so know, it's, it's funny because when yeah when COVID hit, like, you know, we were we we, we didn't start the whole like completely shelter in place till like maybe two or three weeks after. Mm -hmm. um and it was so nice just not having traffic i know you know it's like going in the office took like 10 15 minutes to drive and i was like man i wish it was always like this but yeah well, <laughs> you, you probably remember but the week before they they ordered stay in place google apple and facebook all told their employees to work from home and there was a and, noticeable difference in traffic that week oh yeah yeah right it's crazy yeah and then, those tech companies take they're like 90 percent of the problem <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you look, well, just look at Facebook alone. I mean, they've basically taken over that corridor in Menlo Park, right? Yeah. The old, the old uh, Sun Building. Exactly. Yeah. So what is the story behind Thrive Inside? Uh, what products you offer? Who do you serve? All those things. Yeah, sure. So just to take a step back, um, the, the reason why I started Thrive was because uh, four years ago, I took antibiotics and the antibiotics wiped out all the bacteria in my gut. Uh, some really bad bacteria overgrew called C. diff, kills about 30,000 Americans a year. Mm. And I was relatively young at the time, I was like 24, 25. And I went to like three different doctors and they were like, oh, you're too young and healthy looking to be sick. You know, your blood work is coming back fine. You're probably just depressed or hypochondriac. Mm. So here's some antidepressants. And kind of through that process, it urged me to go on different online forums, Facebook groups, just talking to people with chronic health problems. And they're like, oh, you probably have C. diff. Like, this is a very common thing. When you take antibiotics, you get this. And uh, I should go get that checked. So I got that checked, came back positive. They quarantined me because it was a very contagious uh, type of disease. And I uh, got it treated so much better. But kind of in that process, I started researching the microbiome, which is the bacteria, the yeast, and the viruses that reside on our skin and our mouth and our gut and so forth. And science has been pretty much showing how these different microbes are related to all kinds of illness and symptoms. Uh, and so there really wasn't a good product out there for consumers to understand, first of all, what is a microbiome and what is my microbiome? And ultimately, what are my personalized recommendations to improve it? And so that's why I started Thrive, which is a direct consumer uh, microbiome DNA test. Uh, we like to call ourselves the 23andMe for the microbiome. So you literally, you got to give us your poop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to sample a little piece of poop off the toilet paper. Uh, you send that in a, a prepaid envelope. It hits our labs in one to two weeks. We process that information and then we give you a notification in the app that says your results are done. Within the app, we can tell you uh, the tens of thousands of species of microbes in the gut, which ones are good for you, which ones are bad for you, health benefits, side effects, and so forth. And then we customize a probiotic in uh, three ways. Uh, our algorithm looks at a list of bad bacteria, so pathogens, and then we will recommend different probiotics strains that can create something called bacterial isins, which are naturally occurring antibiotics that can kill bad bacteria. And then we also look at the efficiencies of good bacteria in the body, as well as health goals and symptoms. And that's how we personalize a probiotic. And then subsequent to that, we also have a personalized food recommendation within the app uh, that personalizes specific foods to for you to enjoy and to avoid to kind of figure out the balance of those good and bad bacteria in the gut. Wow, that's fascinating. Um... It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, and I do know 23andMe. It's, you know, it, yeah, that's a good analysis. Um, j just out of curiosity, let's say I were to take your test, to send you my poop, and it comes back with a plan. And let's say six months later, I'm assuming things are more normal, but do you then retest? Is it a, like a continual process? Yeah, absolutely. So the interesting thing about the microbiome compared to like the human genome, which is like what 23andMe looks at, they look at the, the DNA of, of humans, is that the microbiome, like it changes. Your bacteria were, you, you were born with these bacteria, they continue to evolve within you as you grew older. And they are influenced by multiple things like lifestyle, the environment, the foods you eat, medications you take. Uh, even if you travel to a different part of the the world. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why people get traveler's diarrhea is because your microbiome shifts uh, based on the local food as well as the microbes in the environment. Uh, 
So it always changes and we recommend customers retest every three months. So you have longitudinal data over the course of a year to really get a good idea of like uh, the lifestyle changes and the diet changes and the, you know, um, health changes that you're doing are actually providing an impact. Uh, obviously cost is an issue. So customers do generally try to do it twice a year versus like four times a year. Hmm. Interesting. And, and out of curiosity, again, what's your degree in? Yeah. So great question. So I'm not a disclaimer. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a PhD. Uh, I study economics and communication in college. Uh, but I built a very strong team uh, around our science, around um, uh, kind of our advisory board. So our head of research and development is a PhD from Yale in chemistry. Previously worked at multiple different um, vitamin supplement companies doing research and technical writing for them. Uh, and my re the rest of my scientific advisory board is professors from UC Davis, uh, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, and so forth. So we really built science as kind of the foundation of our business. Uh, even though I don't necessarily have those specific skill sets, uh, we've kind of put uh, those folks in place um, to do that. That's great. And that's amazing that you were basically able to learn this on your own and assemble the, the proper team. Yeah, no, I mean, when you, I'm, I'm sure it's the same for you as an entrepreneur. And um, when you get obsessive about a problem, you really dive in. I know just about enough to be dangerous. So, yeah. <laughs> and you had, you were highly incented to learn this too. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's a pain point I'm trying to solve, right? So it's always great to have an organic way of kind of growing, you know, a pain point into an idea and eventually into a business and company. Yeah. Great. So you're the CEO. How did you incorporate the idea of working remotely in your company? Yeah, it's a great question. So it, it did pretty much just happen organically um, because we had multiple different people in the team uh, working in different parts of the Bay Area. So people working uh, up north in San Francisco, people working south, like myself in San Jose. And most of the places that we've tried to find warehouse space that also had like an office corporate uh, side to it, uh, we're kind of in that Redwood City area, kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so it organically happened that way just because, um, you know, folks were driving two hours for a commute, you know, going to work and coming back home. And so we, we mandated that uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, everybody would work from home. And then Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we work in the office. And so we get kind of a, a good breed of um, both sides, you know, obviously with the remote side, uh, you're bypassing the commute. You have more time. You know, commutes are super stressful. I've been driving up and down the Bay Area to Davis and all these different places for the past almost decade. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I, I I feel it. I feel the pain myself. So I didn't want to have my team go through that same kind of problem. And there was just enough you know collaboration tools, uh, online tools that um, made it possible for us to collaborate in that way. And where we had talent. Um, and another thing that kind of organically grew is just like there's talent all around the world globally mm -hmm. uh, at, at a very affordable cost. And because of that, it just, you know, we, we have consultants and contractors um, on very specialized areas of our business uh, that work on a global basis. Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense to, you know, work remote in that way. Yeah, true. And the thing I've noticed too is there's something about working from home two days a week where you depending upon the commute, you're saying, well, I can do that three days a week. It's when you have to do it, four, when, you, when you have to do it five days a week. Oh my God. But yeah, I can handle three, right? There is something psychological about that. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the, the hybrid model, you know, it, it almost feels like 50, 50. So you're getting a deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, in the current situation, the ongoing pandemic has forced a lot of companies to go remote and, and the date was March 16th um, in the Bay area. Did that cause any major roadblocks or challenges that you didn't expect? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily any, like freaked out about it as kind of news was coming in. Um, there was definitely some cultural issues of just people getting used to just working completely remote. Uh, operationally, there was um, some scares with our business uh, because we have a lab and we weren't sure if the lab could continue operating as an essential mm -hmm. service. Thankfully, uh, we did qualify, so that was an issue. So there wasn't a delay in, in terms of like processing samples and getting people the results back. Um, on the flip side of that, customers were voicing their concerns, like some of them weren't buying. 
because they thought COVID impacted our lab processing. And we mm -hmm. have, like we have this little banner on the top of our website that says we are not impacted buy from us um, but that was obviously a, a scare that came from customers and you know we started seeing a little bit of a dip in terms of revenue which caused a little impact on us because of that and um and we have fulfillment that we also do out of our warehouse um where we aren't impacted as well because we are classified as like an essential service and we have a very small team uh social distancing and all those measures and clean hygiene are in place so um so in general, not a huge impact on the business, little minor scares, but generally it was a pretty easy transition. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have thought, but yeah, your your product, right? Your customers, I could see that. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So there are companies like Gabriel that help develop, build and scale products, especially for startups. How important do you think this will be going forward? You've actually mentioned about it already that using global talent for certain things, how important do you think that is gonna be going forward? Oh, absolutely. Super important. Um, I think, you know, as more companies are going into the hybrid model, um, I think companies are going to start looking at how they allocate their resources. I mean, especially during the COVID crisis, there's so many, so many layoffs. Um, a big part of it is just, you know, how do you find affordable talent at scale mm -hmm. and with tools uh, that are available? You know, it's, it's definitely a lot uh, easier to do that. Uh, we are becoming a global economy, global society. And just, you know, everyone going in, into remote and going on Zoom and so forth, it just makes it a lot, you know, more normal moving forward, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Richard, I wanna thank you for your time today. Uh, I wish uh, Thrive Inside a lot of luck. Sounds like you, you've uh, weathered the, the, the first storm here. Mm -hmm. And I wish you luck and uh, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely, appreciate it, Mark. And great success to you as well. So. Thank you, have a great day. Yeah. Appreciate it.